Hi, I'm Dieter Tybeler and I will now give you a short lecture on smog and air pollution. Smog is one type of air pollution. It causes reduction in visibility and air quality originated by traffic, industry and other anthropogenic emissions. It appears like fog, but consists of gases and aerosols. We had two types of smog, London type or classic smog, and for the chemical smog. Classic smog consists of high concentrations of sulfur dioxide and aerosol particles, both soot and sulfate particles. These originate from coal or other fossil fuel burning. The buildup in the concentrations of SO2 and aerosol particles is usually amplified by a temperature inversion, which is usually caused by a combination of no wind and low temperatures at ground level. The conditions for this type of smog is therefore also best during winter, why this type of smog is often referred to as winter smog. The high concentrations of aerosol particles and SO2 in the smog can cause damages to our health. In particular, they can cause respiratory problems, heart diseases and death. One famous example of classic smog is the smog event in London in December 1952. For about four days, the concentrations of SO2 and aerosol particles, in the figure indicated as smoke, accumulated due to a temperature inversion. Many died more or less immediately as a result of the smog event, but the amount of recorded deaths continued to be higher than average for at least one month after this episode of strong smoke. In order to produce the other type of smog that we have, photochemical smog, we need to have nitrogen monoxide, hydrocarbons and sun. And because of the last ingredient, this type of smog is sometimes referred to as summer smog. In the first step, hydrocarbons from traffic are oxidized by hydroxyl radicals to form hydroperoxyl radical and different organic radicals, including different peroxy radicals and acyl peroxy radicals. These radicals then oxidize nitrogen monoxide and produce nitrogen dioxide. Part of the produced nitrogen dioxide photodissociates and forms ozone. While some is oxidized by acyl peroxy radicals and thereby forms PAN. Photochemical smog consists of high concentrations of sulfur dioxide and particles, like London type smog but additionally also of ozone and pan. High concentrations of ozone can cause respiratory problems, for example, aggravation of asthma, reduced lung functioning, respiratory infections and inflammations. Ozone is also phytotoxic, which means that it can damage plants. Pan is a powerful lacrimator, which means it causes the shedding of tears, like a tear gas. Pan can also cause respiratory damages, at high levels, and like ozone, it is very phytotoxic. The chemistry of photochemical smog is rather complicated, and much more complicated than London-type smog, which is also one of the reasons why it is difficult to prevent. The figure on the slide depicts the dependency of the concentration of ozone on the emissions of hydrocarbons and NOx. On the x-axis, we have the emissions NOx, and on the y-axis the emissions of hydrocarbons. The contour lines provide the concentration of ozone in the unit of parts per billion. The ridge indicates the optimal emissions of NOx and hydrocarbons that lead to a maximum concentration of ozone. The area to the left of the ridge is the NOx limited regime where the concentration of ozone increases with increasing NOx and is insensitive to the emissions of hydrocarbons. The area to the right of the ridge is the hydrocarbon limited regime, where the concentration of ozone increases with increasing hydrocarbon emissions and decreases with increasing NOx emissions. Any area surrounded by hills increases the probability of temperature inversions, which prevents dilution of the polluted air and enhances the occurrence of smog. The solution to combat London-type smog is to burn less dirty fuel and coal. In order to combat photochemical smog, we also need to pollute less, but this type of smog is much harder to regulate 
because of the non-linear feedbacks in the NOx hydrocarbon ozone system. And it is therefore still a problem in many western cities, for example Los Angeles.